Hey y'all, this is your girl Carrie, and I am with Solo TV right now. Listen, everybody has their main thing that they're doing, and a lot of people have a double hustle as well. And so I think participants left encouraged, inspired, and got some tangible tips on how they can move their double hustle to the next level. So listen, continue to follow Solo TV. Follow me at Ms. Carrie Baby. And if you're not following Walter, you definitely need to do so. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. My name is Marie Mandeville. I am a professional organizer. I'm also working full-time corporate job. Um, I thought the class was amazing. I mean, I wish I could take off the rest of the week and just go do work for my own business, but I can't. So, uh, my name is Trevor Brown. Hey, man. The event was very impactful. It gave me some perspective on how to balance like the passion and the day job thing and uh, there's some real nuggets here. Now. My name's Heavenly. I'm from Tennessee. I just recently moved to Atlanta. Not recently, but like a year ago. I feel like this double hustle event was perfect. Um, it's from beginning to end, they have very inspiring panelists and Walton himself did a very good job with putting this together. I think it's important too to know that your career is building a narrative. You know what I mean? And just like in this story, there's always peaks and valleys and always challenges, but there's always a theme to what's happening. So a lot of times you don't see that theme in the story until you get to a certain point. And I know for me and what I do, every single job that I've done, everything I've done allows me to get on stage and actually talk about the stuff that I do. If I didn't do any of those jobs, it takes away something in terms of the content. So I'm very thankful that I'm building a narrative that actually gets me excited when I look at what's next because I know it's actually giving me more fuel to be a better instructor, a better entrepreneur. If you do it right, your side hustle will make you a better employee and your job will make you a better entrepreneur. The double hustle. The double hustle. Double hustle. Double hustle. The double hustle, baby. Yeah. to enable or to grow your true passion, which is your side hustle. So it didn't matter if I was here living on the streets, I knew that I was not going home. And so that's what I did. I got on a plane, had a one-way ticket to Atlanta, and figured it out. I, I heard Chief Jake one time say, he said something about, what are you good at? I'm good at creating. I'm good at directing. I'm good at those things. So I'm not It's my job to be able to do that. So, it's kind of by chance, but that's a part of, of my story, being able to merge my spiritual, personal beliefs, gifts, and talents with the work that I do, what, that I like to call in my other life, um, from day, day to day. One thing that we don't realize is that the jobs that we have, they're, they're a means, like if they're a means to end, so you're, you're, they're, they're helping you get to where you go. A lot of times folks can't stay in the job that they work, and so they're not seeing that as you know, the funding or the connection to their side hustle. Well, do not curse the ground in the place that you currently are, are working in. Don't curse it. Because if you spend most of your time cursing it, you will spend most of your time being frustrated. You will be angry. You won't. Because typically it will not look like the vision that you have in your head and you will not see how it is supposed to support what you are doing. Every single thing that I've had to invest in my own businesses and in my own brand has, the foundation has been laid in the work that I have done outside of that. I want to encourage you to be open to allow, I don't know if I can say this, but to allow God to connect the dots for you so that you can begin to see how it will start to make sense um, in your job and in the thing that you are doing in terms of 
um, your side hustle because they do connect. It's all a part of this bigger piece of the puzzle, but you can't get it as long as you make it. Do you think double hustling is a good idea? Why or why not? This job you're going to get, that sounds great. I got fifteen thousand dollars fund bonus and was like, oh, I thought I had a rock, right? All that was great. You can lose that job like that. That can go in second. Second. And so for me, I think they built the always have a hustle, always have something, always be trying to connect with your passion. What do you really want to do? Every night is something I think breathe, eat, sleep. If you don't have that conviction, then you're wasting your time. I think it's an excellent idea, but I don't think that it's a good idea without strategy. Mm -hmm. Strategy is important. To be double hustling without strategy will make you broke and confused. <laughs> everybody talks about how they're booked, and everybody talks about how they're making so much money, and everybody talks about how they ain't sleeping, and all this other kind of stuff. Y'all know it. The truth of the matter is, when you step out, I don't care if you if you are stepping out of your job, I don't care if you're pursuing your passion while you have your job, there are times where you are going to be booked and broke because you are taking the money that you make and you are investing it in your business. How dare you ask anybody to invest in anything that you are doing when your stuff look like trash? You've not invested yourself. And that's the one thing I always say, listen, I might not have 29 cents in the bank. Do you hear me? It might even be on negative, but when you look at my stuff, it's good. <laughs> call it what you shot. But when you look at it, it's going to look like she took some time with this. She invested in this. Then somebody, you just never know, might look and say, how can I invest in what she's invested in? And so, you know, I just, I did, everybody is saying it, but I don't want us to have this warped idea about what that looks like. It's an uncomfortable process sometimes. Some of you aren't in any sleep at night. There are books in you. There are businesses in you. All of these things that are happening and what you have to do is figure out the strategy. Strategy is not intense. Strategy is what am I going to do today to make sure that I'm investing in this business or this side thing while I'm doing X, Y, and Z. We'll stop being as frustrated because strategy kills anxiety. It calms anxiety. You're overwhelmed with both of them because you haven't figured out what the strategy is and how to work the strategy so that you can see that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. What is the biggest challenge that you had in management to hustle? How did or how are you overcoming it now? One of the things I started actually in the middle of 2017 last year is I said I can never ask an employee to work for me and respect the deadline that I set for them if I don't respect my own. So when I set a deadline, it doesn't matter if I've got to stay up, if I've got to sacrifice or whatnot, I respect that deadline just to create that habit. I think one thing that every entrepreneur here can take away from this, this session is, you know what, I'm going to make a decision today, I'm going to wait till tomorrow, I'm going to make a decision today, that the next deadline I set for myself, I'm not only going to meet it, but I'm going to beat it and turn that into a habit. So that was my first biggest challenge, which is getting over the hump of being afraid to do this being afraid to leave that very cushiony job and having to struggle a little bit, struggle a lot of it. <laughs> um, you know, being afraid to sell my home, but I knew I was going to need that money to get me through training. And, you know, um, that was my first biggest challenge. My second was kind of goes along with him. It's procrastinating. Um, and even now, I have to constantly push myself. I was going to say for me, um, I've gotten to the point where I definitely because I, I love photography and video because it's very great. So it fuels that piece of it. It just wants to create beautiful things to help people see themselves. You know, right? So I got to a point where I was going, I had so many people reaching out before that, that I was like, oh, I haven't created any more friends. I haven't done this. I haven't checked on my students. So it started to become um, a problem where one passion started to basically pull and draw all my energy away. I realized I couldn't do too bad. But it's a little different way. I think the biggest thing for me being very introspective is um, I stop I stop blaming other people. I stop blaming everybody else. I'm an only child, I'm incredibly independent. 
But there were certain points along the journey where I'm like, oh, friends, when I see my kids, I'm doing this. I'm not in more uh, relationship, won't go that deep, but she does all this stuff in the brain that won't help me send out these 20 invoices. Why? I'm like, so I kept in the need of wanting more resources and more help for my vision. I look at other people, this, that person, this one, why hasn't this person helped me? And I finally came to a point. Uh, it probably was a couple years ago where I just literally just, I said, I'm not, I'm not blaming anybody else. Any and everything related to my business, my vision is all on me. It's tough to fully accept. But it freed me from those people that I probably spent some resentment with, wondering why they didn't see, why they weren't contributing, why they weren't helping out, why they weren't making connections that they can make for them. Right? Um, so for me, I think that was huge. Um, everything after that has been so much more peaceful, and I just accept others as they come. And I still make sure my friends are people I do business with. That's been very strategic for me too. But I think getting to that point to be just radically honest with myself and say, you know, we got to stop it. That's not money on these other people. We need a great county to be that great county. We need a better marketing, better invoicing, better whatever. Figure out the right systems to do it. The right people will come to town. So making sure that my appetite can support my capacity. You you can you can have an appetite. I always tell people this. You can have an appetite for business, but you have to have a stomach for business. And there's a difference between the two. You can have an appetite for something, but you might not be able to digest fully that in which you really think you want to have. And so I think for me, what I have been learning in this particular season of my life is managing my desire for a thing and what I actually have the capacity to navigate through. So I think that requires a level of discipline, 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 discipline. And I say it because it's the ugliest word. Nobody really wants to have to deal with it. But the difference between you and the person that we see who we think life is phenomenal or the person who we see who is the multi-million dollar millionaire or the person that we see who appears to have everything together in their business is discipline. There's no difference. There's no difference in talent. There's no difference in um, knowledge or information. It is discipline and your ability to stick to the plan that you've created for your life. For me, it is really just kind of understanding that the more discipline you become, the more capacity you have. Because a part of navigating through both worlds, like both of them just said, is really about stewardship. It's not about information alone. It's not about um, any of those things. It's about about your ability to be a good steward. Can you steward your job well? One of the things that, you know, my boss knows what I, he knows what I do. I don't keep it a secret because I just want to make sure everybody's clear about what's going on. <laughs> but I don't leave him wounded. And when I say I don't leave him wounded, he knows that my team is going to be good. He knows that there's a continual contact person. He knows that I'm sending him the stuff before the deadline. He knows that when I get up to have to do a presentation on his behalf, I'm not going to embarrass him. He knows that I make him feel like he is my primary priority. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's a way for you to honor what you are doing in terms of your side hustle, but make everybody feel like they're the most important thing in your life. Make everybody feel like uh, you know, your, your focus is on them. Just scanning the audience, I think a lot of us have this challenge. Um, we're multi-talented people. Mm -hmm. So you have that in your mind. You're, okay, God, what do I do first? Like, I'm good at a few different things. Like, I'm sure the panelists and everyone in here, we haven't even talked about all the things we do. Uh, we just talked about some of the things that are top of mind, but there's a lot of things that we have the talent in. So. I feel like that's also a struggle that's in your mind. It's like, man, I'm really good at this. I really like this. I'm really good at this. Which one do I do first? Yeah, I'm successful in this, but is that really where I should be? And and I've, I've been in that space too. Um, and what I found is I just go with the flow. Where where I feel that most of my inspiration is being drawn from, that is where I'm focused. And that's that's it. It has it has helped me uh, throughout my career. When I focus in on something. Uh, based on what I'm feeling in life. Actually, Tommy Tinney said something last year. He was saying to preach from where you are. Mm -hmm. So create from where you are. Um, uh, draw inspiration from where you are. A lot of times we're trying to, I don't know, clairvoyance or whatnot, trying to 
find where's that next thing like just where are you right now what is really coming out of you space and time are the same thing right and it's not enough to know where something is you have to know where in time it is so like it's not enough to say hey this camera is on this table this camera's on this table today it might not be there tomorrow so again this whole thing about timing and understanding where you're at in the space and sequencing your moves very important. I thought I thought it out there just because I'm a nerd and I'm like Einstein. But um, I want to say thank you to our panelists. Give them a hand. <laughs>